powerful and their cities are fortified and large. What's more, we saw Anakim giants there. We see the, these people and they crush us. Number one, if we look in the eyes of fear, we exaggerate our difficulties. We exaggerate our difficulties. I, of course, they have reasons. They have Anakim Skywalker there, so uh, they might have the that uh, Star Wars stuff. Or not. Uh, this is a different uh, context. So, so they were they were scared. They looked at their at the at the uh, at what they can see with their own two eyes, but they don't see the promise of God for them. You see, most of the time we operate by what we see, but not according to the faith of God for us. Now, fast forward, they were scared of these people. They were giants. Yes, they were giants. They, were, they, they, were, they, they have armies and they have fortified cities. It's difficult to, to, to scale. But fast forward 40 years when Joshua entered the promised land. This is the report that they heard from the very people that they feared. Joshua chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. We have heard how the Lord dried up the river, the water of the Red Sea, for when you came out of Egypt, when we heard of it, our hearts melted with fear, and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. That means their fears were unfounded. Isn't it true that majority of our fears don't happen? Right? They have un 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 unfounded fears. Just, just, just um, imagine that these people just moved out from Egypt, defeated the gods of Egypt, and, uh, and even defeated the mightiest men on the face of the planet at that time. And they even crossed the Red Sea when it parted. And there they are afraid of a local tribe. What does that mean? They forget who God was. They didn't even look, listen to the voice of God. Now what is fear? Fear is false evidence appearing real. That's what it is. You see, where you are today is the tomorrow you're worried about yesterday. You're okay. Amen? Amen? You're okay. You were able to, to break through. You thought of a problem that you, you never thought you can overcome, but you're still here. Amen? As a matter of fact, God has not promised us new years. God had promised us new days. I, I love it in this verse, in Lamentations chapter um, uh, 3, verse 23 to 24. Because of the Lord's great love, because of the Lord's great love, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For His compassions never fail. They are new every day. Every morning, great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for Him. Amen? So every day, God gives us a new day. Make the best for each day. Amen? If you failed somewhere, somehow in the past, remember this, my definition of failure is this. Failure is an opportunity to start over, all over again. Because you don't need to wait for the next year. You just need to wait for the next day. Because God will give you a new day. New life comes in new days. Amen? What are the things that you should magnify today? What are those things that you fear? Will you see it according to His perspective or your perspective? It's up to you, my friend. Know that the people of Israel, when they went there to the gates of the promised land, they looked at the, at the people there and they say, Oh, we, we look like grasshoppers to them. And they see us like grasshoppers. That's not true. As a matter of fact, the second thing, when we look to the eyes of fear, we underestimate our own abilities. They listen to the voice of their fears than to the voice of God. You see, what can really bring faith into your life is this. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. They listen to the voice of their fears and the voice of God. And God told them, you will drive them out. No one will be able to stand against you. But they didn't listen to the voice of God, but they listened to the voice of their fears. I would like to say this statement. You will value yourself according to the words of those 
whom you admire the most. If you admire God, adore Him, you will value His words regarding who you are. You will look at yourself the way God looks at you. Amen. When Gideon one time in, in, in the Old Testament was, they were oppressed by, by, their, by their enemies. When God told him, mighty warrior, he was not even close to anything of a warrior. But God saw in him the warrior. And when he obeyed God, he led his nation to victory. My friends, we have to look at ourselves the way God looks at us. He loves us. He's compassionate. No matter how many times you fail, He has never made someone a failure. Amen? He all calls us His Son. God has never uh, made someone on this earth a loser. Amen? Hallelujah, but love of God. The next thing, when we look to the eyes of fear, we get discouraged. All night in Numbers chapter 14, verse 1, the people were crying. They were so discouraged. Why are we here? We complain. Why are we here? Moses, we could have died in wilderness. Why did you lead us here? And we are, these people are going to kill us. So they get discouraged. They wept aloud the whole night. Discouragement is such a bad thing. It's the product of fear. Billy Graham said, God can use a discouraged person. And I know why. Because it's the, devil's, it's the devil's tool to put other tools in. He, it's a tool. A, dis, a discouraged person can be easily swayed away from God. When you are discouraged with your marriage, what do you do? Unfaithfulness and adultery knocks on the door. You become vulnerable. When you are discouraged with, with, uh, with work, you don't give your best. Isn't it true? When you're discouraged with your children, you nag them and you say negative things about them, you don't amount to anything. Discouragement is a killer because it's, an, it's like a tool that other tools of the enemy will be used. It's like a hollow knife that you can insert more tools through that hollow knife when it is stuck in a person's body. Discouragement. One example I like about those who overcome discouragement is uh, the Miss Philippines. How many of you know I've seen the uh, Miss Universe? Uh, uh, during the uh, bikini edition, I was just looking on the other side. So it's, it's one of my unholy hours, you know. You know, Miss Universe, she, uh, Miss Philippines tried three times to, in, in, in the, to be the Miss Philippines, but she failed. Or on the fourth time, she was able to get the crown, the crown as Miss Philippines. Just imagine. Was it because that on the fourth time she, she competed in the Miss Philippines, is what she became more beautiful? No. She was just still the same. Size, shape, color, everything. But something inside of her, she persevered. She was, she did, she was not discouraged. And the fourth time around, she won and she became the Miss Universe this year. Uh, uh, this year. I mean, it's amazing uh, what... Uh, persistence can do and you guess you guess what what happened during the crowning uh, miss colombia you know was announced and and uh, she didn't get the uh, miss universe walk and then you know it was embarrassing for both of them i feel sorry for both candidates that uh, they crowned miss colombia instead of her but later on they corrected the fact but it, damage had been done so i feel sorry for both candidates but i'm also sorry for them because i'm already married I thought nobody would laugh in that. <laughs> I thought all guys, you guys would just say, huh? What a jerk or something like that, you know? But it's a joke. But my friends, with this face that I have and with a beautiful wife of mine, it's faith. So if you, ladies and gentlemen, if you are waiting for that perfect soulmate, you know what? God's delays are not God's denials. Abraham got Asak when he was 100. That's fine. Amen? Praise God. Now, what happens when we see with the eyes of faith? What happens when we see with the eyes of faith? 
Believe me, in 2016, you will face challenges in your relationships, in your finances, at work, in your ministry. You will have these challenges. And what are you going to do? What happens when we see through the eyes of faith? Faith shrinks my problems. Faith shrinks my problem. You have to look at the size of your God than the size of your problems. If you believe you have a big God, then your problems will shrink. But if you have a small God, then your problems will grow bigger. Whatever is closest to your eyes will get bigger. This notebook might be small, but it's bigger than any of you. You follow? Where you gaze your eyes upon, when you look upon Jesus, he's, if he's bigger, if he's there, if he's bigger than anything, everything grows smaller. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Amen? Faith will shrink your problem. I like King David of old. He has a one-size-fits-all approach to all problems in life. King David of all. I like him. You know what? He had a, a giant in front of him. You know, that giant symbolizes opposition. How many of you had oppositions? Amen. This huge giant in front of him. And, 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 and look at the giant. And then he, in the time they were going to fight, he ran toward the giant and said, You come to me with a sword and spears, but I come to you in the name of our God. So you approach all problems not by manipulation but by the miracles of God. He said, I come to you in the name of our God. He has got a one size fits all approach to all problems. Amen? Genesis chapter 18 verse 14. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? There's nothing. Luke chapter 1 verse 7. Jesus said, for nothing is impossible with God. Faith shrinks my problems. Amen? Hallelujah. The second thing, when you, you see through the eyes of faith, if you study the whole Bible, everyone who became victorious lived and exercised faith in their lives. Amen? Because faith opens, the second thing, opens the door for a miracle. Faith opens the door for a miracle. Mark 11 verse 22, Jesus said, have faith in God. If you have faith in God and you don't doubt, you could tell this mountain, get up and don't jump into the sea. And it would. Whatever you ask for in prayer will be yours if you only have faith. Amen? If you have faith. Faith opens miracles. He said... You, this mountain will be removed from you. May I ask you what are, what's the mountain in your life? Mountain is, is, is not more of an opposition. It's an obstacle. You can overcome your obstacle by the right perspective. If you have the perspective of God, it's by faith.